Hello there, my name is Michael Maynard. Now, I'd like to show you a really interesting lock today. Um, it is hidden there behind that big bit of card, and we'll come to that in a minute. But before I show you that, I'd like to tell you um, a couple of things about a couple of really interesting guys. The first is a chap by the name of King Sargon of Akkad. Bit of an interesting name, bit of an interesting fella. And secondly, um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my dad, because he is the guy who made this thing here. Now, King Sargon of Akkad ruled in some place called Akkad, which frankly I've never heard of, in Mesopotamia, which I have heard of. And for those of you who weren't paying attention in history class, Mesopotamia is what is pretty much now modern-day Iraq. So he was a, a king who lived in, in the Middle East, basically. Now... He lived about four and a half thousand years ago, so his reign was about 2,500 years BC. So um, he ruled a, a very long time ago, okay? And what we've got here is some technology that was around four and a half thousand years ago, which frankly boggles the mind. And the more you see of this in the next few minutes, I, I think you'll agree that the more your mind gets boggled. Now, the second guy to tell you about is my dad, and uh, my dad is a retired marine engineer, so he spent his career in the guts of ships working on things made out of metal and machinery and all that sort of stuff, and when he retired he decided, uh, fair enough, he's had a, had a guts full of metal working, so he decided he might do something different, and he now works in wood, so he's got a very well equipped uh, workshop at his house, and um, he puts together um, wooden toys for children and, um, you know, bits and pieces like that. Now, um, something else that he's made is this thing behind me. And my dad knows absolutely nothing about lock sport. But believe it or not, what my dad has made there is a cutaway of a four and a half thousand year old lock. Now, honest to God, guys, I... <laughs> I really can't believe that my dad's made this thing. And um, even slightly more bizarrely, he didn't even make it for me. Uh, it, it, it was actually made for a guy in his church. And um, this guy has got a sermon to preach about something. I, I really don't know what. And um, apparently this thing forms part of the sermon somehow. So dad's got no interest in lock sport. He has got interest in, in the church. And so this was made for that. But... I saw this over the holidays and um, I thought, okay, all right, Dad, well, yeah, you may be going to give this to your mate, but before you do that, I really am going to get a hold of this thing and make a video on it because it's absolutely incredible. We went round there on Christmas Eve. This is myself and my kids, and both of my kids can pick locks as well, right? And so my dad took this thing out of the, the bag where he had it sitting and uh, my kids' eyes just about bugged out of their head, eh? they, and probably so did mine, in all honesty. Um, but they couldn't believe this thing that, that their granddad had made, and, you know, like I said, I, I had trouble with it as well. So, what I thought I might do is show you guys some 4,500-year-old technology. Now, this lock is designed to go on the inside of a door. So, you can imagine, this is the inside, and behind the, me the mechanism here is the outside of the lock. There was a hole, not shown, where you put your hand through. So the, the hole was, I guess, about that diameter, maybe large enough to, to get an arm through anyway. You poked your arm through and you had a key. Now the key looks like that. So. For scale, that's me holding it, it's maybe 30 or 40 centimetres long, something like that. So you poke your arm through, you poke this thing down into here, you lift your key pins, and the bolt slides back and away you go. It is, as far as we know, the first application of a pin tumbler lock. So we all know about Linus Yale in the 1860s to 1880s designing his, his lock, but um, believe me, Linus Yale wasn't the first guy to do this. This guy, King Sagan Lacard, he had some engineer or builder or something put this thing together. 
Now, I'd like to show you a couple of other things about this. Um, it is an incredibly well designed lock and I, I, I just can't get over how good this thing is. It has three pins here and of course if you wanted higher security then you would obviously just design this thing with, with more pins, right? Um, now my dad Bless his soul. Again, he knows nothing about lock sport, okay? But my dad has actually tapered these pins, and uh, I I will give you a zoomed in shot of that later on. But believe it or not, we've we've got tapered pins here. Now I've I've picked this thing once, okay? And it's a bitch to pick. It really is. And one of the reasons for that is is these tapered pins. So that's the first thing. Now the second thing is. There is really good control of the keyway, and I mean, obviously, this slot here is is the keyway, right? And it is designed to be too small to get a hand or a finger down into. So, let's say you are outside of whatever it is that this thing is locking up, right? The throne room or the palace or the harem or whatever, right? Um, you could maybe get your hand through if you didn't have the key but there's no way that you can get your hand down into this thing to somehow manipulate those pins. Now here's the thing, even if you could do that, let's say you, you built yourself a tool to, to do that somehow, okay, um, you're still not really going to be able to do much with it because if you can imagine, uh, my dad's got this section here as, as the cutaway, right? But this whole unit, bolt included, would have been covered over initially. And I'll show you a picture of, of that later on. Um, what you've just done is made it impossible to tension the lock, right? So when we pick it, I am either going to pull the bolt from this direction or it might actually be easier for me to push it from this direction here. But you think about it, okay, if we've got a dirty great plate probably made of wood obviously because we're four and a half thousand years ago right if we've got a dirty great plate covering this thing you can't tension this bolt because you can't get to it and hey even if you could figure out a way of tensioning it just remember that the hole is only about this diameter so you can only get one hand through so one hand's holding your pick right how are you gonna even if you could get to it tension this bolt. It is a fantastically good design. It, it really is. Now in addition to that, there was only ever one of these things made as far as I know. So we're lucky today, right? If we want to figure out how to beat a lock, then we just go on eBay and we buy two or three of these things and we strip them down and we figure out their weak points and we figure out a way to exploit them. Now with this thing, there really only was one of these things and the king had it and it was locked most of the time. So if you wanted to be a burglar and get in there, how are you going to do it? You, you, you've, you've, got a, you've got a box that you can't see into, so you don't know what's inside it. It's got complex mechanisms, mechanisms in there anyway, so there's these, these tapered pins. And in addition to that, you didn't know what you were dealing with in any case, so it's, I, I just think it's fantastic, it really is. So, the question becomes, how are we going to get into the thing? And look guys, it, it, um, it wouldn't be a, a, a lock sport video if we didn't try and pick the thing. Now, I have got into it once, and honestly, it was really hard to do, eh? It, it was not an easy lock to pick. So, I'm going to have a crack at doing it on camera now. And I've got to say, we might need a couple of different takes to get this done. So you might see this happen in, in one nice easy flow, or you, uh, or you might not. Now how are we going to do it? Well, we are going to get in there with an Allen key. Um, it's pretty much the only thing I could think of that was going to get in past what is effectively warding, right? So this, this stuff here is, is basically warding to make sure you don't uh, get anything in there other than the proper key. And for simplicity's sake, what I'm going to do is tension it from this end. I'm, I'm going to push the bolt in. Now, the other thing that it shows is beautifully, honestly, this, this thing just, just illustrates so many principles, okay? It's going to show us binding order, because you'll see that only one pin at a time is, uh, is going to bind here. And the other thing it shows us is how damn hard it is to pick these tapered pins, um, which is familiar to anybody who's ever picked a Lockwood, right? Um, 
even though we know where everything is, I mean, we can physically look in there and see what state the pins are in, um, but it's still going to be damn hard to do. So, what I'm going to do here is zoom in the camera a little bit, okay, so you can get a, a better look at what I'm doing, and then see if we can get this picked. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. Now, I'm really hoping you guys can see this and you can see what I'm doing. I am tensioning the lock from this right hand side here. I'm pushing the bolt backwards the way that it's going to go. And I get in there and I feel pin one, that's loose. I feel pin two, that's loose. I feel pin three and it's binding. So we ease back on the tension a little and okay we've now got that picked it's sitting just above the shear line now when I picked this earlier I found that that dropped down all the time I had to re-pick it a whole lot okay pin 2 is now binding pin 1 is pretty loose so let's see if we can't pick pin 2 I'm just easing up on the tension just a little again and okay up but feels like we just dropped pin three surprise surprise because that's what tapered pins do so let's go back and re-pick that pin two is binding right on the shear line now pin one okay something's dropped again let's go back through and see if we can't persuade these things to sit up on the shear line where they're supposed to go here we go i think we're getting close to an open now guys right now i've just slid the bolt back a tiny bit i'm kind of pretty uh, pretty pleased to see that happening now let's see if we go a little bit further and let's see if we drop one of those pins yep we just dropped two into three's hole Now one's dropped into two's hole, one's dropped into three's hole, and there it is, gents, we've, uh, we've got the open. Now, we'll zoom back out again, and I'll show you how the key works, and I'll show you locking the thing back up again. So, there it is, there it is in the open state. Let's get our key in there, so you can see how this key works. Um, all the all the key pins, uh, all, all the pins on the key, are bitted the same. And I'm sure that you can see if you change the profile of the bolt here and change the profile of this, we could suddenly do some interesting things with bitting here too. However, let's get in there. That goes up like that. Key pins drop back down, and the little thing's locked up again. So. There you have it guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. I Again, I'm very grateful for my uh, to my dad for making this thing. I uh, I really didn't know he was doing that, okay? And then we went around there on Christmas Eve and I, I just about freaked out. So, thanks to dad for doing that. Thank you for watching guys. Please leave questions and comments. My name's Michael Maynard.